Hey guys. Oh. <laughs> hey guys. So I haven't been posting a ton. I've been super busy. Thank you for everyone on Patreon. Then we have, uh, I think, 17 members. Thank you to all those people over there. We have two paid members. That's great. If you guys want to join for free or pay for the content on there, either is fine. I will start posting there and here. So, yeah. Um, enjoy the video. I already recorded this video once, <laughs> and it corrupted. So, it's great. So, that's what we're going to be making today. In the, last, in the previous video that corrupted, this is why I made. Hopefully, I can make it better. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Start the plane, obviously. Shift A, S, X to scale on the um, X axis, and then S, Y to scale on the Y. Uh, we want to extrude it down a little bit because there's we want, we're going to add like a light under here. So, yeah. If you don't already have it, you can go to um, Edit Preferences, Add ons, then type in Landscape. Landscape. And here is the ANT landscape. Check that on, and then you can add in a landscape. So change up some presets. Oh, oops. Change up some presets. You can go to here. Uh, let's go with like something like there should be like a canyon type thing or a cliff. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Just to kind of add a little bit of texture so we can get that going. So I'm just clicking Shift D and then R to rotate and then Control to snap the rotation and R Z and that can get you can get you this result. So yeah, let's keep going. Uh, let's just kind of add a little bit more space for the lighting down here. And I'm just click Shift clicking all that, all these and uh, adding that. So yeah, now Duplicate and just separate it. I mean, we could have just add another plane, but I'm lazy, so EX, EX again. Then you go to the edge selection and then E, 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 S, X, S, Y, my bad. Depending on yours, it might be S, Y too. I don't know. Okay. So now let's add a little bit more landscape stuff going on. So. I'm gonna change that back to like, let's do uh, flat stones. What's that? Ooh, yeah. Let's do that one. Just get like some little land going here. Maybe we could like make like something like that. And maybe we could sculpt that. So here, here's a little lesson, another lesson. Um, if you if you make it like that, and then you could do W, select all this stuff, make sure it's see through. Turn on, turn on proportional editing, and then just rotate it, and it should work. The bigger it is, and then yeah, so you can make it curvy. It's alright. It's kind of yeah. Just get a little bit more shadows, maybe. Once you get to that point, and then use it on the other side as well. There you go. So let's start getting some cameras. Let's maybe extrude that down. Yeah, just kind of adding a little bit more detail. So I'm just selecting it all with A and then extruding it down so it looks a little more thick. Let's get a camera. Where's my camera? Here we are. Camera, we can rotate the face there and then make it a little bit wider, probably. Yep. Uh, now just adding a camera. Maybe we can make these a little bit taller. Yeah. Just add a little bit more details there. Okay. Um, here's the fun part. So I thought of something while I was making this. And if you take a cur a circle curve, we can curve this around and make it look a little bit more, you know, better. So just kind of do something like that. Keep it there. And then we could do curve. Generate deform curve modifier. Hello. Okay. And then there you go. So now we can move it that way and it will look a little bit cooler. 
So instead of just duplicating like three of them and having some like the seams out, you can just do that. And then if you want to duplicate it and then uh, move it, it, the seams won't show. Hopefully, yeah. Not as much as at least. Okay, let's see how it looks in the camera view. All right. Yeah, okay. Cool. Maybe add some background mountains. We can add some like background haze to here. Okay, cool. Now we can add in our little circle and then we'll get to lighting and texturing. So just using the regular, the key binds that we know that I reminded you in the beginning of the, the video. Uh, let's see, okay. There we go. Cool. All right, so for the little jagged thing, what I did was I just turned this to face like that and then just kind of scaled it relative axis like that. And then we can kind of then just merge these guys. Yeah, merge this at center. Oh, no, merge one at a time at center. So click M and then at center, like that. So to make the fracture effect is pretty easy. All we gotta do is we have to use the annotation pencil and then draw on the surface right here. Just draw a lot up here, just draw a lot. And then just kind of go down to make some more fractures down there. And that should be good. And then we can click object, quick cell fracture. And if you don't see it, just click cell fracture add on. It's the same thing as the ant landscape add on, same place. So random, and that should be enough pieces. So let's break that. And it should break more at the top, as you can see. And if you want to turn off the annotation pencil, we could just go to annotations off. And then click O, and then boom, you have, you can, you can add, and you can now move these as you wish. So yeah, it's a pretty cool effect. So it'd be better if it was like, if it was like procedural, but you know, he, it's always fine. Maybe we could add a little bit more detail here and just kind of scale, yeah. Okay, cool. So now in the center of all that, we can add a, add a point light, go into rendered view, switch to cycles, GPU if you have it. And then it's looking pretty good so far. Let's turn down the background. There we go. Turn up the light. Oop. You can turn that off too once we do that. So turn up the radius a little bit so we get some softer shadows that make it orange. And yeah. Oop, whoops. <laughs> um, so now we need to add some materials. I use Quixel Bridge for my materials and instead of importing it, it like auto imports weird, so I just import it myself with Control Shift T on the principal BSDF. Quixel, it's by Megascans, by um, Unreal Engine, you know, all that, like Epic Games and stuff, so I just use that. We can go to Metal Sheets, or Metal Corrupt, no, not that to me seems, uh, no. Mm, maybe? Yes, I will do this one, okay, cool. Roughness, normal, boom. And then just kind of uh, use this for everything, for all the cubes. Your cube projection, materials, oop, materials, there we go. And then we can just convert that to black and white.
And then once we get more lighting, we can figure out the uh, roughness map and all that. I'm just gonna eyeball it for now. Okay. Turn off the metallic. Okay, cool. So let's start lighting the bottom. Like we planned out, hopefully it's still open. Yes, it is. So I'm gonna add an area light right down here. Just rotate it up like that. RX control to snap it. And then, and then I just click Z and then go up to click rendered view. It's another cool keybind. I like blue. Looks pretty cool. Now we can light, we can light the ring right here now. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Just switch that to a admissive and then boom. Maybe not that bright. And so black is totally rough and then or not smooth so it reflects light and then white is totally rough so it won't reflect light so we want a nice balance here it's not too contrasted in the reference so i won't make it that contrasted let's start doing the light the landscape now the landscape materials so i'll just go in here and the in here and select everything except that one uh we will q project everything new control shift t backspace and then we can go to rock rough yes just import all that stuff except the displacement we don't really need that for now make everything a little bit smaller in scale there we go all right, let's see how it looks. Pretty cool. Um, well, let's add some fog, just so we can get some better lighting effects. Principal volume, there we go. There we go. So yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Maybe you can turn up the point light up here. I should be more organized than this. It's right here. There we go. Um, what else should we add? I'm not sure. Let's add. Let's add maybe a point light right here because there's a little bit of orange right there. Yeah, there's a little bit of orange right in the front in the reference. So let's add another point light. Maybe not that big. So our eye goes more there than anywhere. So. Or maybe we can probably... Just trying to think of with the landscape because the landscape looks a lot better without the light because it's straight on, so it doesn't look great. But maybe we can put a like, put like two up here. Yeah. Okay. And then we could put some stuff in the back to highlight um, up to highlight the mountains. Oh, uh, what, maybe we could put probably a ring back there too, make it look cooler. that up maybe make it a different color yeah okay now we're cooking and now just duplicate this very subtle and then we could add some depth of field to it because depth of field is nice Yeah, let's add some depth, some depth of field, circle, boom. Now it looks a little bit more cinematic. 
So yeah, let's render this out and I'll see you guys in compositing. Compositing, what I did was I used Red Giant's Magic Magic Bullet Suite to bring to make a film grade. Uh, oh, that's not, that's empty, nice. So for a film grade, this is our film grade, and then optical glow, and then chromatic aberration, and we have our final um, final image. We can even add like some cinematic like map bars or something to cover up the the chromatic at the at the bottom, because you know that's what the old film used to do. But now I do is just put a mask and then change it to subtract. Now it looks a little bit more cinematic. Nice. All right, good job, guys. Thanks for watching.